just doing a bit of varnishing this morning, I'm applying the last of the second coat of 50-50 to the little table that lives at the back of my cockpit. This table is very important because as I sit in the push pitch seat, I can put my glass of malt whiskey on there, and you can't put a glass of malt whiskey on a rubbish table, can you? I think, uh, you know, varnishing is important. We don't have much of it on modern yachts, and what we have, we should keep up to a high standard. This is my main cockpit table, looking very smart. And just for a laugh, I brought this old block in to show you. This was the main sheet block on my old pilot cutter. Look at that, it's the size of my head nearly. Enormous. There were 52 of those on that boat, and we brought them all home every winter. We stripped them, we cleaned them, we greased them, and we re-varnished them. And then they all went back and made the hang them all up again. What a job, every year. And we had to paint the top sides and paint the bottoms. It's an enormous old boat. The top sides were six feet high at the bow, and she was 50 feet long. Imagine that, every year. Rub them all down and paint them up. But we were young, you know. <laughs> you can take it when you're young. It's amazing what you can do. I wouldn't want to do it now. I'm pleased now that I've got a fiberglass boat with a relatively modest job list that I can cope with and a nice little bit of varnishing to remind me who I am. Well, yesterday I went to the Royal Ocean Racing Club in London uh, for a party with my pals at Yachting Monthly. Good party it was too. And in the foyer there is a model of Latifa, a boat designed by Fife and built just before the Second World War. Now that boat is a bit big in my life because she crossed the Atlantic with an old shipmate of mine, Adam Burgess, uh, in the days before World War II. He and a lad went across when they were only 18, I think, and they had a rough old crossing. They were halfway across in a storm and they turned to midnight, went down below in a small house to get back in their bunks, and um, on his bunk, Adam found a dead fish, just a small one. And it had come in down a deray box. Now, Latifa was famous for her deray boxes. These are sort of cowl ventilators with a very clever box underneath, so that if a wave breaks over the boat, it makes sure the water can't get in and drown the characters in the bunks. Well, <laughs> this one hadn't done such a good job, amazingly, because they are very efficient. And Rod Stevens, who designed them, is a great man. Well, Adam saw this and he was rather tickled, so he picked the fish up and he got a bottle of the owner's gin and he lowered the fish into the bottle of gin to preserve it. And when he got to New York, he took it to Stephen's office and he put it down on Rod's desk and he said, there you are, Mr. Stephen's, he said, that came in down my deray box. Perhaps a little bit of extra work on the design might be in order. So there you are. Well, I've got deray boxes on my boat now. It's a fiberglass boat, but it's got lovely deray boxes. So far, no fish down them. But, uh, well, as so long as I keep my nose clean and stay out of the bad weather, turn down wind when it's really windy, he'll just heave to and hope nothing breaks over the deck. With a bit of luck, I never will. <laughs> See you next week.